Hello, my name is Randy Townsend. I'm Director of Publications Operations for the American Geophysical Union, and I'm the Editor-in-Chief of the GW Journal of Ethics and Publishing. I've worked for AGU for nearly 15 years, and I am, I've been managing their ethics program for about nine years. Today, I'm gonna to share with you an excerpt of a presentation that I give to my editorial board members each year called Shit Happens. It's a brief reflection highlighting the significance of publishing ethics. In my role at AGU, I, I evaluate all allegations of misconduct. And uh, I always end up with the phrase at the end of the day that you just can't make these things up. Uh, you see some of the, the weirdest um, scenarios that you could ever imagine, um, arguments, disagreements, misunderstandings. Uh, and I'm gonna share with you uh, one of those stories uh, that I think was uh, particularly um, challenging for me. Just for context, this is AG by the number. We are the largest earth and space science organization in the world. Uh, we have more than 60,000 members and right now we have 22 peer reviewed journals. Um, we have across the world, we have nearly 700 editors and associate editors uh, that oversee the various aspects of our peer review um, and are also responsible for the journals. Um, in review, uh, we have nearly 16,000 peer reviewers also across the, the world. Um, but we do respond to uh, members of the Earth, the worldwide Earth and Space Science community. There's uh, many more than 300,000 um, individuals um, that can consider themselves uh, part of the AGU community. So the story I'm gonna share with you today is about two research groups and the failure of a gentleman's agreement. Uh, if you're not familiar, a gentleman's agreement is an informal uh, agreement that's often entered into between uh, two or more uh, groups or individuals. Uh, it's, it's not in writing. There's nothing formal about it. It's usually conducted over a handshake where um, they, they both come to a mutual agreement, understanding over um, who is going to do what, um, and then they go about their way um, with their integrity at stake. If they violate that agreement, then it compromises their integrity. Unfortunately, there can only be one winner. And if um, this pro, this uh, particular um, session wasn't called Shit Happens, and I wouldn't have uh, too much to, to talk about here. But um, in this case, uh, of course, something happens and I, I can't make this stuff up. Um, so in this scenario, we had two different research groups from two separate universities from two different parts of the world. Um, they both converged onto one particular area to conduct research for different perspectives. Um, they were both analyzing different, different effects of, of a seismic event that occurred. Um, when the groups came together, um, they entered into a gentleman's agreement that each group would do their research, but they would only publish the findings for the research that they conducted. Um, there could possibly be overlap, but there was there was under you had the understanding that they would be able to evaluate um, for any of those overlap, and there would be recognition um, and citations uh, in the event that some of that overlap was published. So the first group that completed their research and drafted their manuscript and submitted, um, unfortunately, submitted all of the research findings from both groups. Uh, they they neglected the terms, the unofficial terms of uh, the gentleman's agreement, and uh, the paper went through peer review. Uh, it got really, it received really great um, reviews and accolades from the editors. Um, so we were happy to publish it. Uh, HU had no idea of this uh, gentleman's agreement. Um, we only knew that we had some great research uh, in our fingertips and we're proud to publish it. Um, the second group, unfortunately, uh, happened to learn about this when they saw the published paper online and uh, read through. And as you can imagine, we're, we're very upset and distraught to see 
uh, that they were scooped and uh, the agreement that they thought they were under um, was invalid or ignored um, and uh, trying to figure out what it was they could do uh, from that because they didn't have anything in writing. So that's when AGU got the call and um, I received a message from some very, very angry um, researchers who were in the process of developing their own manuscript to submit to, to AGU. Um, they explained to us the gentleman's agreement and the understanding. Um, and when I, I asked for more information because um, yeah, I need to legitimize the, the allegation, I need to see something that was real. Um, there was no official document in place to clarify the rules and who was responsible uh, for what part of the research. Uh, so in this case, and what I would usually do um, if there was a, a question about who owned the research or who had the rights to publish, um, I would go to the university because uh, they document this kind of information. Because we had two different universities, um, I, I contacted both universities' research uh, integrity officers, and surprise, surprise, each uh, university defended the claims of their own respective research groups. Um, so there was no clear or obvious right or wrong. We were still in at this impasse. Um, but the authors of the paper that published, they didn't dispute the existence of the other research group. Um, so that disclosure um, gave me something that we could work with. We can, we can have a conversation with them um, and hear as much as we could from their perspective and see what we can do to rectify the situation. So um, we came to an agreement. We arrived at an agreement between the authors and, and the other authorship group um, that we would publish, uh, we, we would correct the published record. Um, and remove the data and information that did not belong to that group. Um, so the corrections that were being proposed were actually um, pretty significant. Uh, it took up a, a nice chunk of the manuscript and it seemed as though we were moving in the right direction. So because we wanted to be fair to all bodies, uh, we took those proposed corrections and we shared that with the other research group and said, well, this is what we're proposing or the authors are proposing to edit um, so that you are free and clear to submit your research. Um, unfortunately, this shit happens. And the research group was uh, fuming because they considered that the proposed corrections were insufficient. So we took it back to the authors and said, you know, you, you have to do more, you have to do better. Um, and the authors um, got together and they went a little bit further and proposed even more corrections. Came back to the other research group, the other research group, um, still angry, not as angry, but still angry, um, said, no, that's still not enough, um, you know, we have to do more, they have to do more. Um, so we took it back to the authors and, and in between this, the editors are getting the evaluation uh, because I have a new concern now. I'm, I'm concerned that the amount of content that's being edited out will no longer make this published manuscript um, valid anymore. It, it's losing its value because we're taking things out of it that were peer reviewed and accept it as um, a completed manuscript. Um, so each iteration of proposed corrections and, and exchanges, the editors are evaluating in, in coordination with the reviewers. Um, so here we are back to the primary authors and the authors go a little bit further and say, we really can't do any more than this. This is kind of it. And um, we reviewed it and the editors agreed and said, this is, this is it, this, is, this should be fine. And we shared it with the research group. And of course, uh, the research group, no, they still wanted more. Um, so it was really frustrating. And uh, just to add fuel to the fire, there were time zone differences. So these research groups 
were in exact polar opposite areas of the world. Uh, so for the time to communicate um, a, a proposed corrections and get those to the off to the research group uh, for them to vet it, um, you know, collectively vet the proposal, um, give our collect their feedback, and then give it back. This dragged on for months and months, and nearly a year of, of these exchanges back and forth. Because of course, even in the middle of that is the editorial evaluation to uh, legitimize or at least see if we still have a paper anymore. Um, and on top of that, there were language barriers, which also made things a little bit difficult. Um, trying to interpret the the anger and the the um, the charged, uh, inflamed language from the research group and um, also uh, from from the authors. Um, so it was really really challenging to get to a resolution uh, that was amicable for everybody. So after that third exchange back and forth, we, we had to draw a line. AG had to draw a line um, because as I mentioned, this dispute was really aggressive and, and charged. And uh, we had come to realize that there was little less than um, than bloody retribution that the, uh, the research group wanted. Like they really want these authors to pay uh, for what they did and violate for violating the gentleman's agreement. Um, but we had to draw a line, it, you know, whether it's bad blood or not, um, we have to protect the integrity of the published record and of the research. And AGU and the editorial board members had uh, come to uh, an agreement that, that said that we are satisfied with the proposed corrections. And at that time, we were going to initiate those corrections and we would consider the matter closed. Uh, so looking back um, at this entire experience, um, you know, a couple of uh, reflections that I have I want to share with you all. Um, formal arrangements should really be in writing. And uh, that whole activity and enterprise has very little or should have very little to do with the publishing part. That should happen upfront, upstream, and how these uh, authors are conducting their research. Um, it, it should be formalized. You should have one person that is, is overseeing, or at least a, a group of people that oversee the management of the research. And um, can we could we could go to a person or a group and say, you know, what documentation do you have related to this research so we can have a good understanding of who has the right to publish what and who doesn't. Um, all participating research groups should have documentation about what the agreement of shared understanding is. Um, even before they pick up the first pebble, even before they, they unpack their, um, their research equipment, uh, they should really have a clear understanding of what they're allowed to do, what they're not allowed to do. What's the overlap? Um, what are the concerns? Um, and address those and, and have a plan um, that anybody can see, even the other institutions, that their research areas could go in and formally um, accept this agreement into, um, into their, their files um, so that if things do come in question, we can all clearly see. Um, ultimately, um, AGU could have retracted the paper for the deceptive practices on behalf of the first research group. Uh, it's it's no question that there was a violation of trust that was compromised uh, by this author group. Um, you know, to some to some parts of it, it's sour grapes for the second research group because they didn't do their due diligence. They did not have anything in place, anything formal in place. It was only through um, the honesty, and it's, it's strange to say honesty from a, a group of people that just said had used deceptive practices, but, um, you know, when we asked them, they admitted it. So uh, there is there is that component of honesty is also attached to this and, you know, goes to the convention of wisdom that nobody is all good or all bad. There's parts of everything kind of mixed in. You have to pull it out to get to the bottom of things. Um, so we, those authors were honest enough to admit that they had overreached. Um, and they were also willing to work 
towards uh, correcting the record so that it was um, more aligned with this agreement that um, this imaginary agreement that um, existed only in their minds. Um, but, you know, I'm glad, you know, looking back that we were able to come to uh, come to some resolution and remember that uh, we're not really at odds. It, you know, we do things differently. And, you know, I really wish that more uh, more groups um, had these conversations up front because it could avoid so many conflicts um, that get introduced into um, into the research environment, into the publication realm, which um, you as publishers will have to deal with one way, shape or form. Um, I actually enjoy these kinds of conversations because you hear, once again, these stranger stories that uh, I can't make this stuff up. It's, it's really, um, it's really amazing. Uh, so I will thank you for listening and for your time. Once again, um, I'm Randy Townsend, Director of Publications Operations at AGU and the Editor-in-Chief of the GW Journal of Ethics. Uh, if you have any questions about this, feel free um, to reach out to me. Uh, my email address and my Twitter handle are both here. Um, I'm not on. I'm not as active on Twitter as others, but um, feel free. Thank you very much.